All right, you know what it is, man. This one is about the Baltimore and D.C. car versus the Miami and the Booby Boys. Sit back, enjoy the ride. Let me ride the way I want to ride, man. You know what I mean? Fast forward it if I get, get, you know, get to riding and, you know, hit a different block or something. You know what I mean? We don't do all that over here at the Mecca, man. Unique Mac Audio, man. This one is about the Baltimore and D.C. and Miami car uh, 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 versus the Miami car and the Booby Boys, man. So I'm going to just take you on a little ride, all right? Because Baltimore been asking me for something, you know? But I like to get in touch with the homies before, you know, I say their name out there. So I ain't get, I, I ain't get in touch with my Baltimore homie yet, but I'm going to tell you about the Baltimore car. I know he ain't going to mind, but I ain't going to say his name because that's how official we played over here. You know what I mean? Because he a laid back young dude that, you know, ran with New York and D.C. Good man on stand up time. Gunshots. Gunshots. You know? Gunshots. All right. So now, you got a Baltimore cat down there, right? Good little young boy. You know, he was younger than all of us. He was like maybe 19, 20 at the time, but he was official, real quiet, laid back, didn't bother nobody. You know what I mean? He barely even talked. That's what I like about him. You know what I mean? That he'll sit there. You know, for three, four hours with us, and he'll let the old timers talk, and he'll just sit back and soak up game, because that's what they do. But before I go any further, I want to make sure y'all understand that this video is dedicated to Torian Daniels. Good looking, he did a nice cash app, you know what I mean? So I had to recognize the brother. When you look out, you know, you got to be, you know, shouted out, you know what I mean? Big shout out to Torian Daniels, that's who this video is for. But anyway, we got the homie. He's sitting back, right? Every time we go outside, he just, you know, real quiet and, you know, he'll smile, but, you know, he won't show too much teeth. You know what I mean? He was he was a serious cat, you know, Baltimore dude, you know? But he ran with the D.C. car real hard and, you know, New York and D.C., you know, we get along in there. You know, the men, put it that way. The ones that say New York and D.C. don't get along usually be the ones that ain't on man time. But if you're on man time, you know what I mean? New York ain't got an issue with you, and D.C. ain't got an issue with you. But we in Coleman, Florida. So now we in Coleman, Florida, and, you know, it's a dice game going on. Big dice game, you know what I mean? And dude had the dice. He, he won, no no exaggeration. He, he must have won about 60 rolls back to back. Picture a dude with the dice winning 60 rolls back to back. You understand? And dude's out there gambling. Then... All of a sudden, dude said, hold up, man. Hold up, hold up. It's going on too long. Somebody said, you know, anybody got any more dice? Because, you know, dice is hard to get. Let me explain to you how that ride. This is how I ride. I'm going to give you all the intricate details of the prison. One dice. One, what they all call die, you know, but one dice. Because, you know, you need two for craps and three for CeeLo. One dice in the prison go for like $150. That's because you're going to make your money back cutting the dice. That means every time somebody hit a... Uh, a point with the dice, they give you a couple of stamps and they add up. One dice go for $150. So, and it's hard to get dice because you got to get somebody that work in the education department um, or the rec department where they got games that come in with uh, dice in it, you know, before the administration take them out the box. The guy that work in there, if he cool with his supervisor, you know what I mean? He'll tell the supervisor, let him get the dice. He'll steal the dice. One, you know, either way. So now... You know, they real hard to get. So this dude got 60 rolls with one dice, and dude said, man, yo, I can't wait till the move so somebody come out with another set of dice. You know what I mean? Because something ain't right. But, you know, they rolling this kid. You know I mean, he's, he, he's crushing them, you know, 60 times back to back. So then now they call the move. Dude come out, and dude come out, and he, you know, got a set of dice. So, you know, he they changed the dice. So when they change the dice, dudes start losing. You know what I mean? So, of course, they feel better. Gunshots to him losing. Gunshots to him losing. You know what I mean? So now, dude losing. They feel a little better. They getting their money back, you know? So while they're on the sideline, you know, the Baltimore dude push up on the dude and say, yo, let me see them dice that he had, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he go look at the dice, you know, and he roll them out. And, of course, it comes out on a point. I said, hold up. 
So he rolled him out again. It comes out on a point. He said, nah, something ain't right. So he told, you know, the other homie that's with him, he ain't roll his dice. So dude rolled the dice and they come out on a point. He said, nah, this nigga be cheating. You know what I mean? He, he got to get a gunshot. He got to get a gunshot, man. Bottom line, gunshots. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> the Baltimore dude take it upon himself. It was a Miami dude that, you know, rolled the 60 rolls. He take it upon himself. Cause you know, we all man time. You feel a man violated you, you handle your business if you want to handle your business. You know what I mean? But if it's something like, let's say somebody owe you stamps or something, you know, stamps is the currency in the prison. You know, you already know, I already told y'all before what it's like to be penitentiary rich. So you got a bunch of these, you the man. You understand? So now, dude sitting there, and if somebody owe you, let's say, 20 books, 10 books, even one book, and you ready to put the knife in them, you'll go to the shot caller for his car and say, yo, your man owe me these stamps, man. If I don't get my money, I'm going to put the knife in them. So you give their car a chance to handle it so it don't get into nothing, you know? Because dude might buy a commissary. You know, you might sell a dude 20 books for $100, and he go to the store and he buy you a hundred dollars worth of commissary. And now you give him your 20 books, store day coming, he give you an excuse, you know, two, three weeks back to back, two, three days back to back, depends how long your patience line. And you'd be like, nah, that, you know, I gotta put the knife in this dude. I think he think I'm a sucker, you know? So you don't just run and put the knife in him. You go tell the shot caller. First, you put your car on point that, yo, such and such owe me, I'm getting ready to put the knife in him. You do that so that you don't crash the car. If you just put the knife in him, you call the crash dummy, you know? So you go let the car know, yo, such and such from another car owe me. I'm getting ready to see this dude. You're not going to him to say, come help me. You're just letting him know, be on point, because when I crush him, you don't want, you know, to be in the blind, and then somebody come and crush you behind what I did, so you let him know what it is. And then they'll say, all right, let's go to the shot caller so they can holler they shot caller. So you go to uh, your shot caller and you tell them what happened. Dude owe me. I've been gave him out 20 books. I'm supposed to get my commissary. It's been three weeks. I still ain't get it. He tell me his, his, his mama, mama's sick. You know what I mean? The dog got hit by a car when mom was walking to the thing. She had to take him to the vet. And they got a bunch of stupid excuses. You know what I mean? So dude turns around now and it's like, you know, the shot caller goes and Tell they shot caller, yo, dude owe my man these stamps. He ain't pay him. If you don't pay him, he gonna put the knife in him. You know what I mean? And then whatever happened after that, if y'all want to hold him down, you hold him down. But we just letting you know, respectfully, you know, we want our money. You know? So now, he say you want your money. So here it go. So now, uh, you know, there's situations where when it happened, you just, you know, feel that it has to be popped off right there. And that's what happened with the dice. Once dude found out he was cheated, it ain't no, you don't go bring the car in for somebody cheating, you know, because you ain't supposed to be doing, you know, gambling anyway. You know what I mean? You know, because you don't want to bring the car into it for that. So dude turns around and finds out he was cheating. So him and the homie, they punished him and his man that was, you know, working together, picking the stamps up when he was hitting the 60 roll. So he put the knife in and bang, 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 bang. Stabs him up real bad, you know what I mean? So now they call the move, they go back in the unit. So now the Miami dudes, you know what I mean? Rightfully so, they in their body that a dude from Baltimore does stab one of theirs. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So now they ready to go to war, you understand? So now, you know, we got the homie. I already spoke to him. I got permission to tell it. And uh, he going to come on the show probably early next week. We got the homie from D.C., you know. Big, let's give a big round of applause to my man, Big Red. Big round of applause to Big Red. Big round of applause to Big Red. Uh -huh. Big round of applause to Big Red. So he got a homie from D.C. named Big Red. Big Red, an older brother. He was in his, like, 50s. I mean, he worked out at hands this big, about six feet, and was a big red Carmel complexion. You know what I mean? In great shape for his age. You know what I mean? Chest sticking out here, arms like this, and his hands long down to his kneecap. You know, but you know, and he was a professional boxer out of DC. Put his work in. Big Red wound up doing the almost 40 years. Over 30 years wound Red wound up doing. But you know, but now Big Red down at this time over two decades. You know what I mean? So you don't turn the old man into prison. But he was still nice. So Big Red sitting there in the yard, you know, walking the yard with one of the um DC homies, and he see all the Florida dudes grouping up. But when I say grouping up, we talking about we in we in Coleman, Florida, so we in their backyard. You know what I mean? We in Florida, so it was like four hundred 
it was like 400 DC uh, uh, um, Miami dudes, you know, grouped up in the yard. So Red Walker, so Red pulled one of them aside that he knew and said, yo, what's going on, family? What's the meeting? That way, you know, I'm on point if y'all decide to pop off on somebody, you know? So they tell him what happened with the dice game and that, you know, the little Baltimore homie, uh, you know, stabbed one of them and they not going for you no know, outside of stabbing nobody in their car and not getting retribution. You know what I mean? So Big Red get the details. So now he go back to the little homie and uh, from Baltimore that run with the D.C. and New York car, good brother, you know, go, go to the little homie and he said, yo, you know, what happened? You know, and he told him, he said, yo, dude was rolling the dice. He was cheating. He didn't hit 60, you know what I mean, uh, 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 um, joints back to back. You know, dude come out with the dice. You know, we put the new dice in the game. I take the dice that he had from his man. I roll the dice. It kept coming up. You know what I mean? You know, winners. So I know he cheated. You know what I mean? So right there, I put the knife in him. You know, so Big Red said, you had every right to do that, man. So, you know, whatever whatever it is, what it is, you know? So now, the uh, Miami dudes, you know, let me, let, me, let me get right to the point. It was the Booby Boys. You know what I mean? The Booby Boys uh, rolled up, you know, went and hollered at uh, Big Red. So Big Red talking to him because the Booby Boys, you know, damn near had the call. You know what I mean? But they was laid back, so they wasn't into the bull crap. Let's say that. Booby Boys get their props. Give a shout out to the Booby Boys. Give a shout out to the Booby Boys. Give a shout out. The Booby Boys wasn't about no crap. They was about the peace. You know what I mean? But they was on man time. You could still be about the peace but on man time. So they roll up on uh, Big Red and they talking to him and they tell Big Red what happened. Say, yeah, dude, you know, stab one of ours and, you know, we want him off the yard. You know, so Red told him straight up, you know what I mean? Yo, I already talked to the little homie and he said he ain't going nowhere. So it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we go in the war, we go in the war. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how it is out there. Picture this now. You're in the yard, you got 200 Miami dudes and you got maybe, you know, uh, uh, 40, 50, you know, maybe 60 DC dudes. You know what I mean? And, you know, they out there and all 400 of the dudes is in a huddle. So, you know, something is going on, you know? So now they call the move. And everybody come outside, you know, so all the D.C. dudes come out. So now they 100 strong, you know what I mean? And they 100 strong, maybe about 200, 200, but it was strong because D.C. deep in the, in the prison, you know. So now they come out there and, you know, they roll up and Booby Boys roll up to Red and he said, look, man, you know, the homies over there, we talk. And uh, they said he got to go, you know, the Baltimore dude got to go because he put his hands on one of ours and spilled blood. You know, Big Red told him straight up, look, man, I talked to little homie. Matter of fact, let me go talk to little homie again, see where he stand. So Big Red go over there and he go holler at the little homie and he talk to him and he say, uh, yo, what's up, man? They saying you got to go, man. You know, we rolling with you 100%. Whatever you want to do, you do. So, you know, Baltimore dudes are straight man, you know, gunshots for him being a man. You know what I mean? Because that's how we do it. The Make a what? Make an audio. Make an audio. So now... Baltimore dude said, man, I'm not going nowhere, Big Red, you know. So Big Red said, it is what it is. We holding you down. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Big Red go back and he tell the booby boys, yo, this is what it is, man. You know, I talked to the little homie. He said he ain't going nowhere. Forget what happened in the game. Bottom line, he ain't going nowhere. So whatever y'all want to do, you, you, you know, you do. So, you know, you know, booby boys, you know, because I said they in the middle of the yard talking. You know, Big Red, you know what I mean? The little homie rat and a few other the brothers uh, from D.C. They're in the middle of y'all talking to the booby boys. And after they had a little conversation, they realized that it ain't going to be solved because they're not going to get what they want and do not leaving, you know? So Big Red tell them it is what it is. So they walk off, you know what I mean? So now Little Rat says to Big Red, you know, Big Red straight gangster, shout out and big gunshots for Red. Big gunshots for Red. All day Red get gunshots. Got to give three gunshots for Red. So Big Red, you know what I mean, standing and, you know, Little Rat, you know what I mean, they say to him, uh, he said to Big Red, he said, yo, what's up? You know what I mean? Uh, what's the call? You know? Big Red looked up at the sky. Man, sure how much of a gangster Big Red is. Big Red looked up at the sky. Man, he about 6'6". Six, six, you know what I mean? Big Red looked up at the sky. He said, man, it's a good day to die. You know what I mean? I asked him where he got that from. He said he don't know. He must have got it from an old cowboy movie, Crazy Horse or Sitting Bull or something. You know what I mean? Well, Big Red said, man, it's a good day to die. You know what I mean? And we die for hours, man, because that's what being on man time is. Make sure you cop your man time merchandise. You know what I mean? Hit me up at uh, my Instagram. Now, 
Like this video in the Cash App on the screen. You know I gotta say that. Game is to be so not told. Y'all getting real inside stories official. You know what I mean? Support the hustle. Now, after Big Red said it's a good day to die, you know, movie boys go back over there to their little 200 people, you know what I mean? And they yeah, tell them what happened. So now they all stand about there, and we in the yard, and they got a gun tower. See the gun tower right behind me, right here? You see this gun tower? They got a gun tower just like that in the middle of the yard. And when they see the group of people, you know what I mean? When they see, you know, groups of people standing up, they can telegraph something that's happening. Then they call in the center control, tell the lieutenant, tell the captain, tell the SIS. Yo, it, it, you know, the Miami uh, 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 inmates is grouping up. It looked like something. Then I see a bunch of D.C. and Baltimore and New York inmates grouping up. So something get ready to happen. You understand what I'm saying? So now... By the time he said that, we all in the yard. So, you know, Big Red, you know what I mean? You know, we, 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 like I said, that, that's the elder. So Big Red tells everybody, ah, right, you know what it is, break up in pockets. <laughs> we getting ready to put our work in. You know what I mean? So everybody start pulling out their knives. You know what I'm saying? Let me get my props. You know what I mean? And, uh, everybody start pulling out their knives. They, you know what I mean? They ready to go. You know what I mean? So now they got they, they you know, they got their swords out, you know, and they breaking off in pockets and you know new york dc baltimore we all you know got our little areas set up so we got the yard so that nobody can't sneak behind us because this is what's going on in prison so if you youngins want to go through all this feel free to ignore what i'm saying you know what i mean and challenge what i'm saying because i'm gonna bring brothers up here that's gonna tell these same stories but i just want to you know give it to you right here but, you know, Big Red going to come up here. I'm going to holler at my man from Baltimore, see if he want to come up here. Because, you know, like I said, he was a shy, laid-back dude that was just about his business and soaking up game. But, you know, I'm going to find out if he want to come up here. At least, you know, I shout him out so y'all know who it is that held it down for y'all in Baltimore. Y'all want to know who it was that held y'all down for, and from Baltimore, the little young homie? Put the emoji up, you know what I mean, and put hashtag Baltimore. You know what I mean? Hashtag Baltimore and put your joint up. And, you know, if you want to know it so that, you know, we could, you know, entice them to at least let it be known who it is that, you know, kept y'all on the map, you know. So everybody breaks up in pockets and, you know, ready to, you know, move out and go to war because that's what happened. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, the, the, the booby boys and the Miami boys, you know, they ready to rush. So now we're about to have an all brawl, all out brawl in the middle of the yard. You understand what I'm saying? So now... Out of nowhere, like I said, you know, that tower right here behind me is where the police said they watching everything. So when they see the knives pop out and we get ready to go, they shoot from in the tower. Bang! Oh, we got to hit the gun shop. They, hit the, they start shooting in the gun shop. They start shooting. They start shooting. But you know what? God, man, guess what, man? You know, if you want part two, get with me later because somebody complaining that my joint's too long. So I'm not even going to give you the whole joint because they talk about get to the point. So that's the point. They start shooting in the yard. If you want part two, let me know, man. I'm out. Cheers. 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 Ken of 26, he back on the strip, get it back in the mix, what he mentions a gift, you stand up ten toes down and I suggest you pay attention to this, take a little gully posse and put it in all, he cut from the bottom, came up from the bottom, drop the book, you should go and get it, the Instagram page and the YouTube, you can go and visit, then you can consider yourself LinkedIn, sit front row and get Jews from a kingpin, I went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, did not pay attention with the stupid, talking about a man. That probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grand got along A man that generated minutes on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make the audio
two G's in the night. Drop top beam so shiny. I let Shorty go, she was whining. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spend a couple bands on the dapper fan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. It. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend it in. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community y'all. So we can get back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.